All right, everybody. Welcome to day three of Nightscope's Innovation Week. We have some breaking news from this morning, and I've got a little bit of a surprise guest who's going to try to explain what this thing is. So what's going on, Cam? Good to see you again. Nice to see you, uh, Bill, and congratulations on everything that you guys are doing. <clears throat> it's really important work uh, that you guys are trailblazing. And um, and we're going to get to trailblaze uh, with you. So we are going to take one of those uh, or something very similar, uh, an autonomous drone, and we're going to integrate it uh, with your incredible system to provide a whole nether dimension uh, for you to be able to provide uh, superior, autonomous, cost-effective uh, um, security and surveillance for uh, for your customers. And so uh, what we're envisioning and working together on uh, and have made good progress is a system that autonomously will respond uh, based on the algorithms that you design and that your customers have in order to provide aerial coverage. Uh, additional surveillance, uh, additional sensors, um, and additional services uh, for your customers. And, and I think uh, given the history that you guys have, given the innovation that you've been able to demonstrate uh, to put out into the market, to not just have uh, an autonomous drone system, but to have one that's integrated uh, with the rest of your products is truly, truly groundbreaking. I think it's gonna make a big impact in the market. I think this is gonna be huge in, uh, in lots of ways. Uh, so to so to make sure that the autonomous uh, t-shirt and cap uh, Palooza goes all for well here, now we have got us autonomous security drones to go with the autonomous security robots. Yes. Oof. Yeah. Game changer. Um, and so I, I think one thing that would be helpful for the for the Nightscope audience is can you share a little bit about Dragonfly's uh, one history and then two. I think there's a few people probably in the audience that are thinking like there's going to be these cute little drones that are going to come out of the uh, our robots and I think you and I have something maybe slightly bigger in mind. Yeah, sounds great. Well, so Dragonfly is the oldest commercial drone manufacturer in the world. We've been manufacturing drones for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, we have a history in public safety in particular. Uh, there isn't probably an industry that we <clears throat> that we don't support. Uh, we've been very active uh, the last couple of years uh, in the military, in particular uh, in Ukraine. Uh, but really, our our call to action, our ethos, our mission, uh, our mantra really has revolved around public safety. And the world's first drone that ever saved a life was a Dragonfly drone. And today that drone sits on permanent display uh, in the Smithsonian. Uh, there's, uh, you know, closely like to like the uh, a dozen different museums uh, throughout North America, uh, mostly public safety type museums uh, that have Dragonfly drones in them that have performed different missions and certain uh, aspects and have provided groundbreaking um, uh, innovation into the Very industry. Cool. That, so I, and I think this is just the next step, but hopefully in that evolution. And and Bill, we're we're honored that you that you chose to to work with us on this. Uh, we're uh, super excited to have a chance to work together. We've known each other for for a while, and uh, going through the whole uh, entrepreneurial uh, journey has been uh, you know has its ups and downs, and it's always good to uh, chat with a with a, a colleague going through. I think. Uh, a mirror image in some cases of, of what we've been going through uh, at Nightscope. Uh, yeah. So how big are these things? Yeah, so to speak to your, your second question there, these aren't toys. So that particular drone that you're seeing just over my uh, my left shoulder there, that drone is about the size of a coffee table. <clears throat> so that's about two and a half feet long. Uh, what's unique about this particular drone is that it's got uh, close to 100 different integration of payloads that can fit uh, onto that. Oof. It's designed in that particular way uh, where it, it can carry any number of sensors and multiple sensors at the same time. Where most drones that we think about today, you know, they have a camera, right? It might be a high res camera, or it might be, a, you know, something like that. This uh, this thing can do, you know, LiDAR, carbon monoxide, thermal, 
uh, you know, it, it, it's a delivery platform, it's a winch down platform, it's a search and rescue platform. Um, it's used in many different military uh, and uh, resupply uh, uh, applications. Uh, it can carry multiple types of cameras at a time. There really isn't uh, much in terms of sensor capacity that this particular drone can't do, which is really, you know, as you and I have discussed, really important in terms of all the different applications, uh, light levels, sense and avoid requirements, different environments that may be required to service, uh, you know, the customer base out there that you guys are working so uh, so hard with. So we, we think it's a winner platform uh, in order to do that. Uh, we do have larger versions of it and we also have smaller versions of it. So it's, you know, very, very adaptable. The key to all of these things, uh, aside from the software autonomy and the data collection really is the battery life. So, you know, you, the, the small drones that people often think of that the challenge is is they they really only have eight to 12 minutes of utilization so they you know they, they often advertise they fly for 30 minutes but when you start turning on cameras and sensors and start pushing speed and, <laughs> and an efficient response you know it's five to eight minutes of time and you, you need more than that this they might have to loiter for you know half an hour or that type of a thing so this this is a 22 pound drone that can carry 24 pounds of payload wow. um, so it's, it's it's a workhorse it, it's going to get the job done for us sir so I think one of the great things uh, in line for our long-term mission, as we've been discussing our plans for Nightscope's future, this sits very neatly into the, we need a million machines and network that can see, feel, hear, smell, speak, and cooperate yes. uh, in order to give the two and a half million officers and guards really smart eyes, ears, and voice on the ground and in the air uh, so they can do their jobs much, much more effectively. I think one important thing that you've been sharing, Cam, uh, prior was maybe some pending or ongoing changes in the regulatory framework, or how should we be thinking about this in terms of deployment uh, on uh, U.S. soil, or I guess I should say U.S. airspace? Yeah. So uh, I know we've been talking about this for quite some time and envisioning, you know, all the different aspects of how this could fit together and the big advantages in particular you guys getting to market uh, with it. But the, but the timing has never really been right because the whole industry as it relates to this type of a product really revolves around regulation. So you need to have those special air flight certificates or BV loss beyond visual line of sight capabilities. And so as an organization that has like the history that we do <clears throat> and the airtime that we do, you know, those are things that we accomplished before um uh so so one again you know you need a you know you just can't go pick a drone company to do this you really have to be working with somebody that's got that type of a history we do you know fire support uh, for wildfires we do military type missions we do you know that's the type of you know that's the type of experience that our public safety defenders uh, need to have now the second part of that is how how quickly you get your bb loss waivers you know, can this equipment and the, and the people that are uh, managing it, you know, do they qualify with, you know, the transport candidates or the FAAs of the world, that type of thing, in order to ensure that they have equipment that can fly over populated or in populated areas. And so, but now that that, that path is there uh, and those waivers are now being granted and, and that process is speeding up very quickly. So this whole commercial market uh, is going to open up. So as we've discussed now, now is the, the time to be a first mover. And from a public safety standpoint, law enforcement, security, are there one, two or three verticals that you think uh, could be kind of the initial opportunities for uh, collaboration between Nightscope and Dragonfly? Yeah, well, the one that uh, a lot of people are, most everybody is talking about is drone as a first responder. So, you know, a 911 call in whatever form, whether it's a, on a commercial or a city basis, municipal basis happens, you know, first thing that gets deployed are, are autonomous machines, right? Whether they're robots or whether they're drones or whether they're those types of things. So being able to, to uh, so so that that really is, is the market. Being able to do it uh, with multiple types of, uh, uh, devices is really the key. Um, so while the market is now just really kind of, from our perspective, getting their head around and granting those waivers and having the right type of equipment in order to, you know, get to scene first before an officer can get there, whether they've got to drive or run or however they get there and make an assessment and be feeding that information uh, back. Um, the, the nice thing, the one thing that really excites me about this uh, work that we're doing together is 
is even though you're in the air and you've got a three-dimensional space, you you don't have the added benefit, right, of the data that's already come from the ground, whether it's come from the, the communication mm -hmm. stands that you guys have, or whether it's uh, other robots or um, uh, other autonomous devices that you guys work with. That that th this coordinated effort by far will be is a strategic differentiator, even amongst the the leading figures out there uh, who are really being innovative and pushing this. So to me, that's that's the um, uh, that that's the initial market that that's available to us. And there's very strong demand signals there. Um, what else is exciting is what will come out of this because this capability is now available. So, uh, you know, now now we start thinking about uh, things that aren't just, you know, first responder, but now we're thinking about things about pervasive security, right? Preventative security. Those, those are areas where, uh, you know, we've never really been able to uh, play uh, because the same thing, when you've got a drone in the air, you, you only keep it up for so long, right? You've got limited battery life. It has minimal, not minimal, but it's it's got uh, capabilities that have limitations. But now when you're combining this with the type of platform that you have, now we can talk about just not being responsive. We can talk about being proactive. And, and I think, to, so that's an entire market that has not been addressed that I think quite quickly over the course of the next year, uh, you know, the demand signals that we're getting, people's eyes are really going to open up to uh, why this is incredibly important to have from a preventative standpoint. Yep. And then can you speak a little bit to the charging and autonomous charging thing, which is a little bit of a hot button for me. Um, if you've ever watched a couple of officers try to take a drone out of a, a trunk um, and launch it, it's um, sad and comical at the same time. So how does that get addressed? Yeah, so there, there's there's nobody that's gonna be oh there's an emergency I'm gonna run up to a roof and launch a launch yeah. a drone so so these are these are drones that uh, sit in in discrete locations and uh, you know upon signal uh, they deploy autonomously so they're in they're in protected environments uh, protected from the elements and the weather and secure uh, and they they fly autonomously based on you know ev everything from the lidar work and the GPS work and everything that's been mapped out for that particular customer you know in the area that, of operation so. Um, uh, again, the, the the last thing you want is necessarily having to have an officer fly something as opposed to having eyes on yep. um, in a situation as as we've all learned that this is a support tool, right? This isn't the solution. You know, people are the solution. Uh, this this hopefully just lets them do a, a stronger and more uh, uh, effective job. So I'm hoping, Cam, that this ends up being a long term relationship for us, where we can uh, get small, medium, large and extra large because we have a very wide portfolio of technologies. I can imagine, you know, uh, extra small one coming out of one of our K1 blue light towers. Uh, one could be, you know, s sitting frankly uh, above a, a call box uh, up and down a highway because uh, you need, you know, eyes up in the air for a situation. Um, it could be flying out of one of our autonomous security uh, robots or, or the K7 that we talked about earlier uh, this uh, this week. So I think this is the beginning of a much wider relationship over over time. Well, we're certainly hoping so and and planning on it. And um, you know, given given the the breadth of your product line, which is one of the things that excites us, uh, same thing. You know, we can adapt, and as we've talked about, we can build the right drone for the right mission. Um, that, that, you know, sometimes you only need a drone that flies for seven or eight minutes, right? Because it's got a different mission profile. But that information and what it does in that seven, eight minutes is, you know, is the difference of sometimes millions of dollars or lives. And uh, and other times you're going to need a coffee sized drone that's going to be have to be pervasive for, you know, 35 or 50 minutes. Um, but we can integrate all that. And, and that's why we're excited about what you guys do and how you do it. And then uh, I'll, I'll end this on the one thing that's a hot button for me this week is just AI mission control. I think if you kind of fast forward uh, a bit, um, if uh, a public safety law enforcement department has uh, drones, robots, unmanned ground vehicles, quadrupeds, etc., like how does that look like from a user experience standpoint? You're going to give them 15 different user IDs and 
and passwords and have them all log into different systems and somehow get these autonomous machines to just not communicate to you know with each other and i think we need to build a a new mission control platform uh, that all this can feed into so that the blue light tower can actually speak uh, directly to the autonomous drone that can speak to the k7 and kind of literally cooperate uh, because there's no way you know, 911 dispatch or security operations center is going to be able to manage all these autonomous machines and do it at the ready and do it quick, right? Um, so I think that's, this is not just a hardware discussion. This is, okay, how can we use technology and a new software platform to really uh, rethink and reimagine this? Well, one of the, the great advantages, another one of the great advantages uh, of, of what's transpiring here is that as, as a security platform, at least as it's currently envisioned and, and based on what's already built, there's probably no other you know, uh, commercial, let's call it non-military security platform that collects as much and as very data as what this does already. Yep. The key to AI is data and right. very data. <clears throat> so uh, two things to comment on there. The, the, the AI component of this will, will transpire like that whole space is very, very quickly. Right. And and of course, this isn't going to be operated by 15 different people doing 10 different things or all the rest of it. Um, so that that's that's one that 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 autonomy, which isn't even AI, that's just autonomy will happen, you know, pretty much out of the box. The AI component to be able to uh, do missions uh, better, more efficient, uh, etc is entirely possible on this platform because there is so much data being collected and it's so much various data. Now, what really gets interesting as you and I have talked about is that this data is the platform's data. So its ability to be a stronger platform than other security solutions out there and get better exponentially, right? Because it has its own proprietary data is a real competitive advantage. So uh, again, I know we've, we've talked a lot about this over the last uh, couple of years and have always said, it's gotta be the right time. It's the, you know, the AI has gotta be there. The regulatory has gotta be there. The, the demand signals have to be there. And, um, and here we are. I mean, how cool is it gonna be to have like a, you know, here are three mission recommendations given the set of circumstances right now. You know, you've got the historical data, you've got live data uh, from all the machines and devices, and now you can make a very thoughtful decision as opposed to going click, 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 I don't know what I should do right now, yeah. Yeah. Um, and have uh, a, a genuine AI platform to really give uh, a, a new meaning to 911 dispatch and a security operations center which the industry is not set up for, right? Most of these uh, are still trying to understand how a autonomous security robot or a drone could could be helpful for them, uh, but aren't really thinking through, okay, robots and drones are gonna be everywhere. How are we gonna manage this as, a, as an industry? And uh, that I think is a wonderful opportunity uh, to build something really exciting. Yeah. Well, and and it, it just it, just a few demonstrable use cases uh, that being well known uh, quick, quickly, quickly, you know, rolls that over or turns that tide into becoming industry standard. So there are many industries, you know, I can only speak from the own industry I'm in, but there's many industries today that are they they wouldn't operate without a drone. And there's many more now that you can see are about to tip over and go like, we can't not use a drone. Um, yep. Yeah, the, the latest of which is the military, right? I mean, they saw a couple of years of proof positive of what's going on, in, in, unfortunately, in Ukraine. Then now you've got every military in the world scrambling and building budgets for uh, category one and category two drones, these smaller drones, right? Whether they're FPVs or whether they're, uh, you know, resupply drones or wh whatever the case is. And um, and so so industry after industry as it relates to autonomy, right? And and robots or devices being used in that regard. Um, the next five years will move quicker than the first five years of the internet it, as it relates to autonomous heat. And, and AI. we're gonna make it miserable for anyone looking to do harm to everyday Americans because yeah, the robots are coming. So Cam, thanks for doing this. Good to Thank see you, my sure. friend. Always. And this is going to be an interesting chapter in the book. It will. And have a great rest of your week. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Awesome. Good to see you. Take care.